Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here, and this is World of Warcraft Dragonflight Tailoring Knowledge Points Guide. So in this guide I'm going to take a look at tailoring as a profession, I'm going to take a look at how you get knowledge points for tailoring, what those knowledge points can be spent on, and some ideas on what exactly you're able to accomplish with which knowledge points. So let's take a look at tailoring. First of all, tailoring is one of the shorter professions with 630 total knowledge points. That's still going to take you half a year or so, so yeah, there's still a bunch of stuff to do. But in some ways, tailoring is one of the easier professions. Tailoring does not have a race that would be dedicated to tailoring. There's no race with plus 5 racial skill bonus. Cultirans have plus 2 skill bonus to everything, but they don't gain a significant advantage in tailoring, so tailors can be of any race. Tailoring is also the easiest crafting profession to level, because the existence of Masters will the cloth fishing cap. You gain the recipe from Valdrak and Accord at Renown 15, and it is the only profession gear that does not require any metal. So you can craft those really cheap, and you can craft them all the way to like 98 or so, and then you just craft one real item and boom, 100. So tailoring is super easy to level. In general, in Dragonflight, leveling professions, you want to craft as many different recipes as possible. Because every time you craft a recipe for the first time, you're going to gain one knowledge point. And that also applies to recrafts, so do any recrafts that you can of recipes that you haven't crafted before, because that still gives you the first craft bonus. Typically you get to like 50-60 pretty easily, you just craft all sorts of recipes that open up and make your way to that level, but after that most professions you face a bit of a wall, like how do you progress from there. But in tailoring, Master's Wildegott Fishing Cap comes to save you at that point, once you're out of doing all sorts of recipes and getting those first craft knowledge points, then Fishing Cap all the way and boom. Tailoring has four spec trees. They are unlocked at 25, 50, 60 and 75 skill. They used to be unlocked a little bit later, but Blizzard luckily fixed that because in some professions you really, really got stuck with those trees, but luckily tailoring was always kind of easy in that regard. So how do you get knowledge points in tailoring? These are all the knowledge point sources for tailoring. First of all, there's the hidden treasures and the hidden trainer that you can just tour the Dragon Isles and Visit those, and that's going to give you 29 points. Then there's points from Renown. At level 14 and at level 24, actually with Dragon Scale it's 23, you're going to get 5 points from each of these. So for tailoring, that's Dragon Scale Expedition Renown and Valdraken Accord Renown. For a total of 20 points, 5 points at a time. Then there's Artisan's Consortium. As you gain reputation with Artisan's Consortium, you can buy those notes. And notes are 10 knowledge points each. There's three sets of notes available for each profession. So overall, you're going to get 30 points from those. Then there's first time crafts, and there are tens of first time crafts. So that's a pretty significant source of knowledge points early on. And once you're done all of that, then you get to the weekly grind. And the weekly grind gives you 14 points per week. There's the weekly quest, there's the one to gather stuff, there's the one to craft stuff, and then there's one to fulfill crafting orders. And remember, you can send crafting orders from your alts, so no worries, you don't have to find public orders. That gives you 9 knowledge points per week, those three quests. Then there's weekly gated drops. There's 4 drops available per week. Two come from either dirt or expedition packs, disturbed or expedition packs, so you need to travel the grounds and shovel up some dirt. Then there's for tailoring, one from Nulls and one from Nakud. So just grind some of those and you will get the drop eventually. Then there is the Draconic Treatise that scribes can make, which can be used once a week. It's single-use item, so you have to order a new one each week. One per week can be used, so that's one knowledge point. Then there is Dark Moon Fair, once per month, so you can get three knowledge points from Dark Moon Fair. And then the only repeatable source of knowledge points that's not limited is the Dragon Shards of Knowledge. People have been people have been grinding these. You get like one Dragon Shard of Knowledge every something like 300 dirt that you dig up, so it's doable but not very recommended. Anyway, you're going to get a few at the start when you do the quest chain and then you will get some more eventually. So. They do drop at a little bit better rate from rares nowadays as well, so you can expect to get one or two every week pretty much. So that's your sources of knowledge points. Well, now that you have knowledge points, what are you going to do with them? Let's take a look at all of the tailoring spec trees. So first of all, we have tailoring mastery. Tailoring mastery is 
a fundamental, very important specialization tree because it gives you a bonus skill. Then there's a note for bonus inspiration and note for bonus resourcefulness. All of these are very, very useful. The skill is for all tailoring, so that's super important. Inspiration, because of the way the crafting system works, you are going to do a lot of inspiration crafts if you try to craft gear especially, also if you craft as a river or chronoclot. So inspiration is super important. Resourcefulness, less important in getting work, but also important because actually maxing your resourcefulness node is going to double the material that you get from resourcefulness because it increases the amount that you get. So it's not just the proc chance, but also the amount of materials you get per proc. So if you want to gain a lot of materials back from doing crafts, max resourcefulness is super important. For tailoring, for mini specs, like if you're crafting tailoring gear, cloth is pretty cheap, so it doesn't matter too much. But if you're into like as a way of chrono cloth bolts, then resourcefulness becomes more important. Then there's also that one node with 50 points for improved cloth scavenging. And cloth is so cheap that I just don't think there's any reason to actually spend points on it, even though in this screenshot there's one point on it. Whoopsie. The second specialization for tailors is textiles, and textiles include reagents and embroidery. Also super important, going textiles and then straight down to weaving, if you want to do azure weave or chrono cloth bolts, because multi craft is right there in that weaving section. But otherwise, if you're not doing those raw materials, and raw materials for tailoring are pretty cheap, I must repeat that, then you probably don't want to get into textiles at all. The third specialization tree is draconic needlework, and this is where you learn to make azure weave bolts, chrono cloth bolts, and also you learn some of the azure weave and chrono cloth recipes. However, those recipes are not the most in-demand recipes, so you don't actually have to get into this tree unless you want to make those bolts, because this reduces the cooldown and also gives you some multicraft for them. And finally, there is what I consider the main specialization tree for tailors, and that's garment crafting. Because garment crafting opens up recipes and gives you skill to do combat equipment and profession gear. So this is super important. This is where you're really making if you want to make gear. If you want to make bolts, then the dragon cloth and textiles are the way to go. And tailoring mastery is needed pretty much for every single tailor. But I want to go a little bit deeper than that. So let's start talking about some individual stuff that you're going to be crafting as a tailor. And first, Azure Weave and Chrono Cloth bolts. And if you look at Azure Weave and Chrono Cloth bolts market right now, you can see that actually rank 2 Azure Weave bolt is selling at less than what the materials cost even though this is a time-gated resource. But even time-gated resources in this expansion, there is very little profit unless you actually spec into this. And even if you reduce the cooldown, well, you can make more of them, but if you're losing money each time, then, then that doesn't really do much. So what you really need, you need skill and you need inspiration so that you can make as many rank 3 bolts as possible. Then you need multi-craft. Multi-craft is super, super important, so that you will be able to make multiple copies of bolts, so that's just instant profit. All the extra copies are just profit. And optionally you also want some resourcefulness, because these use some of those awakened materials, and saving some of those is also just profit. So if you want to spec fully into one of these, let's say Azure Weave, and you want to have everything that's related to making an Azure Weave bolt, you can actually spend 220 knowledge points into that. Because you can use 90 points in tailoring mastery. There's the tailoring mastery, 30 points. Then there's inspiration, 30 points. And resourcefulness, 30 points. Resourcefulness is the least important of those, so 60 points are pretty important. Then you can spend 50 points in textiles. Textiles includes a lot of multicraft and skill, so that 50 points is pretty important. And then you can spend 80 points in draconic needlework. You want to open up the last path first, as soon as possible, because the last path includes multicraft and it includes cooldown reduction. So then you fill in the earlier points later on. But overall, yeah, you can easily spend 220 points just to make as much money as you can with a time-gated cooldown. So these professions are really not the professions of old. And then we come to the bread and butter of Taylor's Vibrant Wilde Clot. So these are your basic spark using gear pieces. And how do you make this? You open up the recipes by opening the second level 
of your garment crafting tree. That will then allow you to unlock the third level and not putting any points on third level yet, you get the recipes. How much skill will you have? What kind of items will you be able to make? All the trees give you the exact same amount of skill. Even though one of them has a second level 50 points and others have 40 points, the 50 points one has no bonus skill slots, so it still gives the same amount of skill. And if you fully spec all the way to the third level in a single vibrant wilde cloth piece, you will get to 24 skill points away from 418 with missive and embellishment, which means that then you are within range to use an illustrious insight, which you can only use if you're fully specced into that specific piece to guarantee that 418 item piece with embellishment included. However, with tailoring, cloth is cheap, so it kind of doesn't make sense to sell your insights really cheap in order to be able to craft in one go when you can get over 30%, closer to 40% inspiration and then just craft it over multiple attempts, but that should still be cheaper. So actually you don't necessarily have to go all into the third level of garment crafting trees, because filling out the second level means that you will be able to inspire every single third level piece from that area without putting any points in the final slot. Uh, so that's pretty useful to know. However, if you go all in, have all points, fully fully made, done tree, of course, but best profession gear, 100 skill. The difference that it makes is that then you will be able to craft 418s with missive, but no embellishment, without relying on luck at all. If you are fully maxed for the second level, but not the item specific final level, then you can do 405s with missive, but not with embellishment. But if you have 405 with missive and embellishment, then you will always need inspiration or you will need an illustrious insight, even if you're fully specced into a specific tree. And the same applies to profession gear. When you do profession gear, all profession gear that tailors craft is either chest or head armor, and they benefit from garment crafting to get the skill. And if you're fully specced into one of these trees, you get 24 points away from max rank of blue gear, which means that then you can you do that with insight or you can do that with inspiration. But you don't have to go all the way in to be able to just inspire them. The importance of being able to use insight and guarantee the craft in a single go really depends on the value of the materials. For tailoring, materials are usually cheap. If materials are cheap, there's no reason to use insight. If materials are expensive, insight becomes much more valuable. Then there is one special case of profession gear, and that is the tailor's own epic dragon cloth tailoring vestments, epic profession item. And this benefits from multiple places. You can get garment crafting for chest, that gives you skill for this. You can get skill from Azure Weave, and you can get skill for chrono cloth. But garment crafting alone, without going into Azure Weave or chrono cloth, is enough to get you within inspiration reach of the max rank. So then you can just inspire that rank 5. I actually think if you're at some point maxed in chests and Azure Weave and Chrono Clot, then you will just be able to craft max ranks just without anything. But that takes a lot of knowledge points. So that covered Vibrant Wilde Clot and the Profession gear. But then there's also Azure Weave and Chrono Clot gear, like Amis of the Blue. So how can you get into crafting this gear? First of all, the issue is, of course, how do you get the recipes? You get a little bit from the profession trees, but many of the best items are dropped, so you have to get the recipe as a drop or you have to buy it. All Azure Weave and Chrono Cult gear recipes are difficulty 400. And Garment Crafting Tree, if you go through the Garment Crafting Tree alone, you cannot guarantee even an item level 392 item without inspiration or insight. However, this is where the inspiration node in Tailoring Mastery becomes really handy. Because if you take the garment crafting and you take the full inspiration node, then you can inspire item level 418 without even taking the slot specific points. So you can unlock the ability to make 418 Azure Weave and Chrono Clot gear without putting any points in Azure Weave or Chrono Clot, just in garment crafting and in inspiration. However, if you want to get within inside range so that you can guarantee the craft in a single go, then you will need points in both garment crafting and in draconic needlework. Neither one alone is going to be enough to get there. So what are the overall conclusion and recommendations based on all of this information? Well, first of all, tailoring materials are really cheap, which means that inspiration is relatively better than doing insight. Which means that in tailoring, you're really trying to get your inspiration up and get to an area where you can inspire these good crafts. 
and garment crafting opens up the most options when it comes to inspiration, because you only need to get the second level and then you can inspire all of the crafts there. Sure, you're not getting all the chronoclot and Azurve recipes because some of those open from draconic needlework, but the most in-demand recipes are drops anyway, and even though they are Azurve or chronoclot pieces, you can still do them with garment crafting alone with the inspiration. Also, maybe as a final consideration, there is money to be made with Azure Weave and Chronoclot bolts, but it is not nearly as simple as in previous expansions, because you really want to get that multi-craft resourcefulness thing going, and not just do the bolts, not just reduce the cooldown, but really make most of your materials, save materials, and get multiple copies in a single go, and that's where the real profit is. This is also going to require quite a few knowledge points. But armed with this information, you should now be able to decide where you want to take your tailor and get to crafting. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members, and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.